very quickly explain what this video is about. It's about me testing my skills of observation against nature. Hence the title, Pond Guru versus Nature. I'm basically going out into remote places, normally into remote places, and I'll be identifying where animals have eaten a meal or come through or some, somewhere where they've gone under a hedge or something, basically identifying the tracks and signs. I'll be setting a trail cam and I'll be predicting what animals I'm going to get on the trail cam in the form of pictures and videos. I'm going to leave it for four to five days and nights, come back, have a look at the footage if there is any, and then see whether I have won or nature has won. It's that simple. If nature has won, it doesn't mean to say I've lost, because if nature's won, chances are I'll learn something from that. And you'll see as this series goes on what I mean by that. Now, of course, I could just make a bait station in the wood. That would be way too easy. If I set a game cam there, I would know exactly what I'm going to get. And the same is true of a bird table in the garden. Yes, I might get some fantastic footage, but it'll be very predictable and I won't learn anything from that. What I'm trying to do is learn something. And if I'm learning, hopefully you're learning. Now, as I get further down the line in these series of videos, I'm going to be reviewing these various cameras that I'm using. So look out for that in the reviews of outdoor equipment playlist. Now, just at the top of this very steep valley here, we've got a gorge. Nothing can climb up the sides of that. So where I've walked up the stream, everything kind of gets funneled to this point. And I've identified quite a few trails coming down off the bank side below the gorge. And this is the first crossing point animals will have from one side of the valley to the other. I think it's a good place and as I was coming up the stream I noticed a foxy smell. And I'll show you what I've just spotted. There's a few shadows so it might not come out very well but hopefully you can see there's a wet mark on there. Just here. And it has been raining so you'd expect you know raindrops to run down but that across here is not a natural watermark. So having identified that particular thing as being out of place and also noticing a smell, the next thing to do is to smell that. And as I'm talking, I can actually, I can taste the smell of that. It's fox, it's dog fox. And it absolutely reeks. Basically the fox has come up the stream in front of me, piddled on here to mark its territory and then disappeared off up the valley. So I'm going to set the camera up and I'm going to get a picture of it and possibly some video. Now because it's been raining, there isn't any footprints to see. They've all been washed out. And this ground's pretty hard, so the fox that came through hasn't left any sign apart from that piddle on the tree where it marked its territory. So the trail goes across the stream here and up the other side and there's a few fallen branches that haven't got any debris on them at all. They're very clean, so obviously something is going up here. So there's our trail going across the river. There's our very, very steep gorge. I don't know whether you can see there. That is a very, very steep bankside. It's a sheer cliff, basically. So we've got a trail coming down here. And we've got a trail coming down on the other side as well. Just next to that tree. Very steep, but it comes down through here and across the stream. There's also another one which comes from out of the field down the wood and meets up with this one. Therefore we've got at least four or five good trails all converging at this point. One, two, three, four, five, yeah five possibly six trails meeting at this point where the fox marked its territory. Now this is a strange one. At first I thought that this on that confluence point was somewhere where deer had been rubbing the antlers and it still may be there seems to be deep scratches down here, almost like something's been sharpening its claws. Yep, that's been made in an upward motion, because I can see the, the bark's gathered here. So that's gone up. So that's deer. It's not, say, like a big cat or something, scratching its claws. Definitely deer. But that's on the path. Right, we've got the scratching post right next to the camera. We've got the pitling post right behind me. That's where I'm going to put the camera to take both those features in. We're 
come back to this in a week and we'll examine the footage. Now because I came up the stream and I identified that confluence point of all those trails, I'm actually going to leave by the stream as well. I'm not going to follow one of the trails. I don't want to leave any more scent or any more disturbance than is absolutely necessary. So I'm going to go up through the gorge, climb up the waterfall and hopefully won't leave any scent or any disturbance for the animals to find that I was actually here. I've got high hopes for this one. Well, that's the first one out of the way, and I can say without any shadow of a doubt, nature has won this particular round. No foxes and no deer. That's not to say they're not coming through there, I just didn't get them on the camera. And one thing I've really learned from this video is, it, well, there's badgers in the wood, I didn't realise that beforehand, but the main thing is, that tree on the right hand side of a lot of those bits of footage where those squirrels were running across that's a blatant squirrel run and just to the right of that there's a fallen tree across the river it's an obvious crossing point for squirrels obviously I can't set the camera up there now because I know that to be a crossing point so I'll be cheating but I've definitely learned something from that video I didn't spot that I went straight to the more or less obvious thing of where the deer scraping its antlers and where the fox had marked its territory. So nature won. One nil to nature. <laughs>